coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off Back at you in Gloves Off on Paul Buitron, and today we have Rick Laurel, who's running for Laredo City Council District 6, and uh, we're going to talk to him about what's needed, changes, his ideas, and so on and so forth. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Paul. Nice good. to see you again. Good. good, good. It's a, it seems like a uh, deja vu. You guys were here before and some of the same crew. I know, and, and you know, I was remembering that last time you, you held a, a debate here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was the first debate of the 2018 um, Run that we had, yeah, yeah, uh, no, it was, it was, uh, and and it was the first debates actually that we ever that we ever had. And really, we had, we had almost everybody. The only one that didn't show up was that uh, candidate. What's his name? George Rodriguez was the only one that missed. Oh, well, we were eleven last time. Yeah. Now the people were saying, "Wow, there's a lot of you at five. I was like, <laughs> "I'll take five over eleven any time." You know, and and uh, it was hard because it's a there's a good group of guys, you know. There's a good group of guys. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, you all mean well. You all, and it's it's going to be who's the favorite instead of you they know. Are, they, they are great guys. We all bring something different to the table. We, um, you know, we, we sit in these green rooms before the debates, and and it's comfortable. It's it's laughable. It's laughing, and we're joking, and it's not tense. So there's some there's some. Good cats that are running. Um, yeah, there's some good cats. Unfortunately, there's only going to be one that, that gets to the seat. So, uh, that's just you know that's just the way that's the way it is. You know, I, um, I remember um, being in friends, and I remember being in in clubs, and you end up going in a tournament. You end up fighting somebody that was your your sparring partner at the end because they yeah, took and, you know so you like. And you still have to do it's just for sport and everything else and and uh no heartaches or what it's, have you but it's that's whenever you know whenever the bell rings or whenever you're inside the ring that's it's, it. it's a different story it's a different story it's just like when we played sports we had friends in other schools we were on a football field one side the lines it's you we're not i mean we still show sportsmanship but you're the opposition so we're defending our own and trying to prove our points and Trying to make sure that people know that that we are that I am the the, the best candidate for this for this seat. Sure, um, you know, there's a this race is very important. A lot, a lot of people say mm -hmm. for many reasons. You know, they um, were past COVID. We've seen what this past administration did to small businesses, and they really did a, a number on them. They basically destroyed them. Yeah. Uh, and you see, and I'm gonna tell you from experience of what I've experienced. We have a lot of folks that. In the past couple of months, are import export guys mm -hmm. that are moving from here to San Antonio, and they're moving their families. They're moving yeah. everybody. They're moving San Antonio. Some of them will own some restaurants, and they're moving. They closed the restaurant here, yeah. and they're moving to McAllen. And they said that they're not. Their feeling is Laredo's not small business friendly. And how can we do? Or what ideas do you have to change that? Because we do need to change that. Well, just recently, Laredo was was voted amongst one of the best cities to open up a business. In two in two thousand one. No, no, no. Just recently, we had a two thousand one. No, no, we just dropped to number ten from number one. So we're number. Oh, so from number one, number ten, we're in the top ten in the country. So we, but we dropped. But yeah, yeah. There's always room. There's always room to grow and room room to to better it. I think, I think we do need to do a better job to help local businesses also bringing in outside businesses but if we don't help our locals then how we're going to help our externals right so we have to make sure that the city has a one-stop shop where you can turn key in less than 30 days because guess what the bank 
The bank doesn't wait on on your permits. The bank doesn't wait on you. The bank doesn't wait on anything. Hey, uh, the rent the renter doesn't wait on that. He needs his rent money the, and the, everything else. The owner know? of the property, and and if you are the owner of property, your your monthly uh, notes to the bank. Nobody waits and except you know, except the tenants, the people who are trying absolutely. to open up the business. So the city says, no, well, we're out 30, 60, 90 days to be able to give you a permit. You have to have a cushion at the beginning just to be able to open up quickly. It's it's pretty much like you see these shows on TV, right, that they're flipping homes. Hey, we got to flip them in 20 days because we got to do it before the end of the, before our next note is due. So you gotta make sure that people are in, in, in business and open doors and the register's going and people are coming in. I, I would like to see no more than 45 days. Let me tell you one thing. Um, if you most, and because we've been looking and we're helping people as well during, during COVID and changes and what's going on because number one, we got hit with COVID. Mm -hmm. A lot of people weren't prepared. Now they're prepared and now they're looking at a recession. Now they're preparing themselves for a recession. There's a lot of things coming coming our way real quick, real fast. Mm -hmm. And um, when you go look and rent the local, and you start shop, shopping around, start looking for a place mm -hmm. to go to, half of these places that you're going to rent are not finished. You have to finish them out. Right. They're just so a shell. They're just a shell. So, and the main complaint by a lot of people is that the city, just to get a temporary permit, they're they're taking anywhere between fifteen to thirty days, twenty five days at the at the average. That's too much. You're already paying rent. You're, you're not doing anything. Now they're saying that, let's say you get a general contractor that's going to finish it out and he's going to go to electrical. That they're taking t uh, twenty, twenty five, thirty days just to send the next building. So you mean to tell me that you're going to be wasting at least four months just on the building inspectors to go out there? You're out of business. You right. you already that's it, and you know and they say oh because we're we're very busy. Don't tell me that you're going to compare yourself with Dallas when Dallas can do it in five days. No oh, no no. You no. know seven from from three to five days, seventy two hours. Dallas is but doing stuff. I I think that that reflects on the city as a whole because not we're having a lot of problems not only with the building part. Our water is no is no secret. But that, you're talking about the municipality. The municipality. Yeah. Of, of, of work within the city so I think it's not streamlined I think it's very you know overlapped and a lot of people are doing different jobs so they they're, they're getting very busy and they're not getting you know they're not task oriented our city has to be a little bit more customer service friendly because just because we are the municipality doesn't mean that we get to that doesn't work. That doesn't work, man. It, it, you go to a business, and if somebody treats you like that, are you going back? No. Hell no. You go to a restaurant, and somebody says, no, 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 you wait for your plate. Whenever I give it to you is when you're going to eat. That doesn't work. Yeah. So, of course, people are never going to go back to that restaurant. So, guess what? People don't want to come to Laredo. Or if you are in Laredo, you want to get out. So, we got to make it easy. We got to make it quick. We got to make it a quick, uh, uh, you know, a tenant, a tenant uh, occupation. <laughs> Uh, permit, we gotta get it. It's stupid to wait 30 days. I can't wait 30 days. My banks, my banker's not gonna wait 30 days. So we gotta make it a one stop shop. You go in, you're out, less than 72 hours, you're ready to start working on your building. And I would say 30 to 45 days, you're open and we're ready to rock and roll. So, what does that mean? Is we gotta make sure that we have, if, if there is a lack of people, then we gotta make sure that it's that we hire more people. That we hire qualified people, not compadres, not sisters, not brothers. We got to make sure that they're qualified people, that they know what they're doing. And if we have to look outside the city, when we look outside the city. But you know, I'm going to tell you something because you, you've said some darn good points, and uh, we all need we need to work for that. And what's happening is that complacency and the bureaucracy that Laredo itself has made. And I don't think and, and, and it's not compliant they're doing it just because you know what we'll go do it tomorrow that that uh, the land of mean, yeah you know <laughs> that, you know we whatever they need to do they, they need to come through us to do this and we have not called out our directors our assistant directors our people that have been there they've been there for a long time you know they've been there 20 25 years mm -hmm. 30 years some of them 
and they're doing the same thing they were doing 20 years ago. Yeah. It doesn't change. Every department is like that. And you say, oh, this is happening. And then they'll go over there and you see, the directors have figured it out. And here's the problem. They have nine people they have to talk to. Mm -hmm. They have to brown nose tonight. I'm gonna use that word. And that, and that right there is wrong. They have to brown nose tonight. They shouldn't be talking to those nine. You know what I'm saying? So uh, one of them, let's say you're inside, you get a complaint about building inspection. And the building's happening. You go over and tell the director, hey, what's going on? Tell the city manager, what's going on with this? When he this, 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 they go tell them, hey, you know what? Uh, Councilman Laurel uh, is, is complaining because in this area, it's taking too long to do this. What is that, that director gonna do? in the next meeting, oh yeah, we're taking care of that, and he's gonna brown notes with the other people over here on the other side, what can we do? Or he's gonna tell the buddy, you know what, let's go put a, a, a thing in parks for us to do a, a fly, fly, fly your kite day with your favorite uh, councilman, and ya está contentos. So ya te, ya me enseñaron a uno, me entiendes? Ya lo tienen ahí, you know, with a candy apple. So yeah, I'm doing great, they're doing great. So. They've been doing that for such a long time. But that intermingling between council and the mayor and directors, you're skipping f how many people in the chain of command? That's, that's the difference that I see that uh, I know that I'm there to create policy. I'm not there to micromanage a department. I already have my own business that I have to, that I have to take care of. So who's in charge of that department? The director. Who does the director report to? The city, the city manager, manager, assistant city, city manager. manager. That there's a there's a management team that manages all those departments. There's a protocol that's supposed to be taking place, and it's not being. But done. it's skipped. It's jumped because why? No, I don't. I, why do I talk to you when I I know this guy's going to do it for sure? Because I am so many levels away from from his position. That's intimidating to those people, and sometimes they don't even go to the director. Sometimes they go even beneath them. So, I'm there to create policy. I'm there to hold one person accountable, and that's the city manager. Indirectly, it's everybody else that's beneath them that will be held accountable also when I get to that seat. You know, because when you look at stuff like that, that's basically what's happening, you know, and there's, a, there's and CEOs always talk about this, and, and they always talk about the ABCs of destruction of the company, okay? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's what you need, and complacency, bureaucracy, it, okay? It's, it's a big business is what it is. And I've worked for, for multinational companies, mm -hmm. and I, I can't remember some, a time where the CEO would call me, no, you know, you, you trickle it down to where sure. it gets to the, the workforce. And I've been part of the workforce, now I'm part of management with my, with my, where, I'm, where I'm at. So I understand that my boss doesn't call my employees directly, he calls me. Yeah. And then I take care of that and I make sure I do it for him and then I report back to him. It's a chain of command. It's, it's everywhere you go. At school, you have the principal, everybody beneath them, at, at work, at everywhere you go. So. And, and, wait, and at city government. And well, not here. <laughs> no, well, not, well, not, well, it's not, it's not, not at this time. Not, mm -hmm. in the, not in this past administration. Right. And this, this administration has all those, the ABCs, it has arrogance, it has bureaucracy, and it has complacency. And they think that they're doing everything right. There's not the, what do you mean you're complaining about the city? Well, you're, you're our enemy. Don't talk to that person. Let's blackball this business. Let's blackball this. And that has to stop. So complacency in the business means stopping your growth because you're just happy with what you have. Yeah, stop doing, well, you're content. You're content. Now in a business, if you're content and you start losing clients. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. You have now, to go back. Now here they might be even more complacent because, oh, well, the tax dollars are gonna keep on coming in. And the way because, uh, what, you know, nothing's gonna, we're not gonna lose uh, hundreds of thousands of they're not, people. They're not going to fire me because oh. my comadre is going to, the director on, on the parks is going to give them something to do at the parks and tan contentos hay. Y lo hay la manzanena. Can you go over here? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Y, yeah. You see? We're loved. We're loved. We're loved. There's a difference. And I'm going to put that in here. There's a difference between being the most popular and being the favorite. Yeah. I can see that. And right now, 
the, there's a lot of candidates that want to be the most popular instead of being the favorite one that's going to be elected. And that right now we need to get back into saying, you know what, let's, let's, let's get people inside that know exactly what's going on, mm -hmm. or they're going to try to fix the problem that's going on, allow them, because right now we have, we have five, member, five new members that can do yeah. five. And it's very hard because the last time we had four, but now we have five because mm -hmm. of what's going on. So, and it's very dangerous because people say, oh, the mayor's, a, the mayor's really relevant. It's a city councilman that we have to put inside because they're the ones that vote. And if it votes extreme left, well, then we're going to be dealing with some subjects extreme left. If it votes to the extreme right, well, then we're going to be dealing with issues on the right. Mm -hmm. So it has to be, ha there has to be a balance. And right now, if you look at it, it's true, it's leading to the left. And if you get certain people inside, it's going to lean more to the left, and it's just going to poop, tip all over. Now, you mentioned something right now about uh, the mayor being irrelevant. They might be, they might not have a vote. Maybe they're a tiebreaker. It's a tiebreaker. But guess yes. what? They're, they are uh, the ones who rally the troops. A good leader, a good leader does. A good leader has A to. good leader rallies the troops, makes them work together, and they're the city compass. Whether you, whether he has the power or not, that yeah. position has the most power when it comes to the podium. And that person speaking holds more weight than five or four or nine and, or eight. And, and you have to understand how to use the gavel. The gavel's a little, yes. nice little piece of wood, and when right. you hit it on, on there, you're the one that's in control. And right. here you had, and I'm not making fun or anything, here there was nothing. In the last eight years, we've seen nothing. We've seen nothing happen. I mean, we're hiring you to to build a radio. We're not hiring you to build Nova Laredo. Well, and you're not. We're not hiring you just to cut ribbons. You know, also either. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so without no, without so that thing, so we need to get level-headed people in right. there that understand what's going on. And hey, this is dire straits because you talk to some people, and in some districts, the councilman is getting involved with them opening up a bi business. You can't have that. And, and what I mean is, no, we don't want it here. We want it somewhere else. Why don't minute. you open it up in my district? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, no, we, we need to stop all that. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's, it's going to come. It's a big shift. This is an important election. It, yeah. It is pivotal. It is, I think this is more important, or not, I don't want to put that, that election down, but the Tangelo election that shifted the whole city, that had a fork in the road, that's where we're at again. Where th are we going to hire another yes sir, yes ma'am, yep, si city manager, yep. and we're going to have another golden parachute in a year and a half, two years? Are we going to have enough water to supply our Laredoans in the next 20 years? Are, are we going to have the water system that we should have in place for our kids to grow up and have clean water. You turn the faucet, that's an automatic, it should happen. I mean, as long as you pay your bills, right? Uh, that, that's an essential that, that, no, that should always be available. You know, um, you're uh, absolutely correct. There's a lot of things that need to be changed. You know, we need to stop putting stuff under the, under the, uh, under, under the rug. We're, we're you know, doing let's worse. Sweep it, let's sweep it under the rug, but now there's a huge lump. Well, we're doing worse than that. We're kicking, we're kicking the can down the road and kicking the can down the road and we see it and we're just, nah, whatever, ah, whatever. We'll just kick it on. We've done that way too much. And that has caused the issues that we're having right now. The lack of leadership, kicking the can down the road, and the me, when, me mentality, that, that has kicked us in the rear end. And what does that what does that mean? McAllen, a region, or RGV, San Antonio has boomed. Why? Because hey, they're terrible down there. Come open up over here. Oh, we'll give you great tax but they're, incentives. They're, they're, but they're mo and people are moving. They're seeing that we're we're right. going to end up becoming a ghost town, just like the mall is. It's going to be a ghost town. And if we continue with the same process, the same mentality that we have, and the same. Everything is fine. What are you talking about? You're talking bad about the city? If you talk bad about the city, we're going to we're gonna send the inspectors to go after your business. No. You know what? Stop it now. You're acting like the mafia and you don't have the muscle. No. And you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and, and, those, and those people that do that, there are, ins there are people that do that within the city. And they, and they do it even with the simple as like, hey, don't worry, we'll fix it with a lunch. 
some more, some whatever. But I mean, my my wife's family is is a small business, and I've seen it, and it's it da coraje, da coraje po, and it's like why 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 are we still in this in this archaic system? It's time to it's time to evolve. You know, pe people say this. Um, no, we're we're landblocked, and they want us to grow. Hey, if somebody's grandfather or granduncle made some moves for the future, for the future of their family, and their family's taking advantage of the the land that's around there, more power to them. Okay, understand what I'm saying? The, and, it, and, it doesn't and, happen only here. But it happens every. It happens all over the place. The, the, the United States, the state of Texas, is the most privately owned land state in the union. Yep. So what happens in San Antonio? The city of San Antonio has to work with a, a, city, a, a landowner. Yes, the city of grow. Houston, San Antonio, yes, Austin, yes, McAllen, yes. El Paso. Hey, landowner, guess what? Like we wanna, we wanna develop. We wanna grow into your area. Let's work together. Private-public partnerships, something that has blown people away. Of, wow, what do you mean public-private partnerships? I was like, what do you mean? What do I mean? Like, this is the way we, we grow. It's not like the city or the state owns the land around us. We're not in a socialist country. You know? It, 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 well, and people, and people don't vote, that vote, vote certain ways and we'll be there real quick. Vote certain ways and we'll be there very quick, yes. Um, but... I am pro development. No, and we have to. And we have to be. And okay, so if we go to the south, ah, but why are they working with them? If we go to the, if we go to the north, why are, why are we working with them? To the to, to, well, the, to the, the west, we can't go nowhere, but because of the river. But to the east, but why are you working with? Them? Oh yes, but who am I supposed to work with? What do I do? Just sit sit back and kick it? No. You gotta you gotta make sure that you work with everybody. And and you know and if and you don't like, like them. Or that maybe you don't no. like you don't like not not you not you, but that 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 citizens don't like them, or that citizens feel like why them and not me. That's a totally different that's story. A totally, listen, and that's what people need to start understanding right now. And you, we have to start planning for the future. You think it's it's going to be roses next year? No, I mean we're in a recession now. No, I mean you go to to the shops here. A lot of food's not there. It's and if it get, is there, it's, it's it, expensive. It, it, it's expensive, and it's gonna and it's gonna get worse, mm -hmm. and it's gonna get worse, and it's gonna trickle down. It's already hitting Dallas, Houston, everybody. It's trickling down. We saw it during the and, during the pandemic, and uh, we better understand that that's gonna be here real quick, and so we have to prepare for many things that are coming forward. And right now, we have to prepare, and we have to look and study, and see how and who we're going to put up there. Not because he's so-and-so's cousin, not because they have a nice bumper sticker, not because he gave a dance, not because, you know what I'm saying, and, and because they'll take us under quicker than anything else. Oh, yeah. Has a, does, does a person have, where, what's he done? Does he have a small business? Has he run a business before? Um, what is his background? Education. You know, besides education, you got some guys out there that are a lot smarter, never went to school, but you ran great businesses. So, so, so we yeah. have to get those people that can negotiate. These guys couldn't negotiate their way out of the bathroom. And, you know, and, and no, really. And when you and when you, when you talk to them, they're like, why, why are you insulting me? But look at what you've done. Yeah. Look at what you've done. But what you haven't done. Look at how, <laughs> look at how in 2020 the police act against small businesses. Look at how... In 2020, how the, the building inspectors acted. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now we're finding out that the science was wrong. So you're you're gonna tell me you, you know you're gonna tell me that that um, it's different? No, they're gonna act that way. So just imagine what happens if we put people up there that put different rules in there. So there's gonna be five new people that are gonna be looking different ways than the five people that are there right now. And we need and we need good people that are yeah. going to be up there, yeah. folks. I'll tell you this: if you're listening. Um, research each and every candidate. Take a look at them. Call them up. Call them up. Hey, you know what? We have a problem down the street. I uh, want to get together with you. I want to show you what's going on here in your neck of the woods because you're you're going to be. My, you might end up being my my councilman. If that person calls you right back, go for it. That person doesn't call you back, go for somebody else. Because if that person gets elected, and 
if you're not answering foot calls now, don't expect them to answer your call when you, you're in You know, I, um, we've been block walking. So whenever they're not there, we, we leave the door hanging. And I get calls back. And I, it feels good to get calls back, right? Yeah. And uh, they're like, wow, you answered? Is this, is this you or is this somebody else that's working for you? I'm like, no, 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 this is me. Wow, like I've called others and they don't answer or I get a, leave a voicemail or I send a text and I don't get a response. So it, it, it's, it, it's imperative, it's important that, that we, we take those calls seriously. I, I have my phone number on every one of my hang hangers, my cell phone, my personal cell phone, not somebody else's or the secretary's. And I, I'm called, I respond. If I'm on a call or if I'm talking with somebody else, it's rude to interrupt, to take something out, another call. So I'll call you back. I always, I hate looking at my phone and seeing those red badges on my, on my phone, on my texts, on my emails. Then you and I know back. people that I see their phones and I'm like, you have 17,000 emails that you haven't read. <laughs> Why don't you just erase them? So no, 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 I'm a little, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little yeah. anal when it comes to that. No, no, and you have to, and you have to be if you're going to run, mm -hmm. run a business. If you've been around small businesses and understand what it is, yeah. Yeah, so, you, people, if, so people ask me, why do you want to put yourself out there like that? Do you know why? Because when I've called and nobody answers me, it feels terrible. I feel like I'm like I, I'm hopeless. Like I don't have somebody that's going to voice my opinion. So I don't want other people to, to feel that. So and it, it, it all trickles down to leadership. Dude. Leadership, leadership, leadership. And that's right. Leadership. And and you say you know we we said the it's the mayor's position not irrelevant. Well, it's relevant, but. Uh, we need somebody in there that can bind everybody together. Yes. Not, not have the lack of decorum that uh, that occurred here. And one councilman up here. I remember that one of the city city attorneys in one meeting. Everybody was out eating, and she said, "Wait a minute, everybody come back here. There's no quorum. The meeting stops." But everybody was out eating, and they, they got mad. Well, we've always done it this way. We've been doing Doesn't it wrong. Doesn't matter. You right now show the respect. Doesn't it's matter. not for you to go be feeding yourself with a sandwich. And you know what I'm saying? Go back in here. Um, this meeting, uh, I was at the last meeting, and, and man, we we uh, everything finished up at eleven o'clock. And those those directors and city employees that have items on the agendas, they've been there since eight o'clock, if not earlier, that same day. But you know, but then tell me, but tell me if they go in late the next day. No, they're expected to go in at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, you know. When you have businesses like that, and you're placed in some some of those positions, you're expected to do that. That's part of your that's part of your job. And so, but if you go in there and you get a job, a nice cushy job, and you're not expected to do that, that's when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, listen, I love my town. So do I. Know, I that's I, why I, I came you, back. I know you love. I know. You, yeah, I know you love your town as well. And it's it's when I left, there used to be an old uh, bulletin board. It said, let's keep the buck in the rain. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. It's, pass and, it's, and it's, it's passing the spot. So, it, no, it went. <laughs> it flew. <laughs> it flew over. <laughs> it flew over. And, and we need to do something back in here. You know, in, in the early 2000s, we were the second fastest growing city in the United States. Something happened after that. Um, we're the number one port of entry, like port and sea, mm -hmm. right now still. We can see that. We will, and more likely, we'll always be in there in, in the top two if somebody else doesn't live in Los Angeles. But, but answer, answer me this, why is that the only industry here? I'm part of that industry and I live comfortably off of it, but why is that the only industry here? Why don't we have a teaching hospital? Why don't we have a, a medical, something more than just international trade? I'm telling you. Why, why, where do you have to, I, so today a buddy of mine is taking his mom to San Antonio to go see a doctor. Why? Because there's no nobody here. There's no specialist here for that for whatever it is she's going to. We have the specialist, but I'm going to tell you something mm, about the doctor. Not always, and, and and the trust is also not no, there. It's not, it's not it's not there because the doctors looked for it here in Laredo. You had 175 doctors that were signing a letter to stop small businesses from reopening because of 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 the pandemic. Of course, they were bl they were blaming the small businesses, and even they came out in city council. Oh, you yeah, all have to do what you want. And they was voted out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so right now, as a small business owner, and my wife or my daughter or something happens, 
and I need a specialist, yeah, I am going to go to San Antonio. I'm not going to worry about the ones here because they didn't worry about my business here. Well, let me you, tell you, what I'm, uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and right now, this is another thing that I might I might do, call the insurance company and say, are all these lists of doctors that said no, are they on my insurance plan? Because I want to change it because of this letter. And if all the small businesses would do that, those doctors, I guarantee you, would eat that letter up. And we enough of the wokeism. Let's stop it now. You know what I'm saying? We've always taken care of our doctors, I know because my father's one. Uh, Laredo's always had the great specialties, but when you come out with that stuff to damage and hurt an, another small business, yet the small business owners that were looking down a barrel of a shotgun to blow their head off because they were losing their businesses. Yeah. They were about to pop so many pills, they were about to put a bullet in their head. Why? And all of a sudden now you're, you're, you want to close their business down to, uh, because of that. And what got, gets me is they didn't want to take responsibility, not only the doctors, the city, that where it was coming from were all the illegal immigrants that were holding in the other institutes that brought up the spike to 300. They were all, you know, and just two weeks prior to that, we had a city that wanted to do a referendum stating that we had no crisis. So so here's, here's, what, got, I, here's, you know, you know so what I'm saying? Here's what I suggest. I, I can't do anything about the past. Yeah, we have to go for the for forward. We have to look forward in the future and make <laughs> sure that we don't trip over the same things that we have tripped over the past. Absolutely. And we have to be that way and we have to actually start getting people in there that can bring the amic be amicable again. I can start pushing and start pushing this forward. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And if this happened and you messed up, hey, earn your error and go forward. But if you, if you we're human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. People were afraid. I mean, you know, you know, you have, you know, it reminds me of like the Godfather, and um, you know, and, and they say, well, he was a wartime consigliere. No, he was a he was not a wartime consigliere. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did not have a wartime leader. You know what I'm saying? Poof! I didn't even know he was still around. I thought the uh, pro tan was around. You know, because what months I never saw his face. And the pentus said, "Yo, one dia, like a worm oldo, me entiendes?" And then the, you're like, "Okay, okay, he's back." But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and so we need leaders that's gonna say, "You know what? Let's let's put this together. Let's bring everybody. Let's bring the whole city together because the city's lost. It's all over the place." We, like or, I don't know. That's my opinion. Yeah, I don't know how you see it. Like or dislike, you know, we're 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 on the other side of the pandemic already. And let's um, move forward. And what what they did, they did the best to their ability to what they thought was best at, at the moment. Now we have to do what we think is best for us. And now is the time to go out and vote. We are a pivotal election, and that election means you can have growth, development, clean water. A new source of water. That's what we need right now. Yes. Or if you if you elect the wrong person that cannot work well with others, guess what's going to happen? One Four billion, years down the drain. One billion dollar project down the down the river. Then down everybody down gonna be the like, drain. Because you know why? You know what's because they can't, they can't get along with the others. There are people that are very polarized that are running in my election that have pissed off a lot of people up on city council previous and current. How do you think it's gonna go if that person gets elected? We're not gonna get anything done. They're gonna get blackballed. They're gonna get you know, shunned out of, of, of meetings. Guess what? Four years of death for District 6. And we can't afford to elect the wrong person for this, for this election. You we know. have to make sure that we have somebody that's gonna grow the district. We have to make sure that we have somebody that's going to develop correctly and make sure that we don't trip over the same problems. We have to make sure that we can do two things at the same time because we have issues that we've been dragging along and we have to make sure that the future issues you know, are, are worked on at the same time. Beautification of the city. People want a prettier city, but at the same time you want clean water. And we should have both. We should be able to do both at the same time. We have to understand that monies 
sometimes are allocated for specific projects. If we get a grant, a federal grant for something, uh, beautification, then it has to be spent on beautification. If we have a grant to fix our water system, we can't use that for anything else except for our water system. So we have to really say, they're all like, well, why are you spending on that when you can do this? Well, you don't, the people don't understand that, hey, this money might be a grant money from the federal government that if we have, if we have it for this reason, we have to use it for this reason. And because if not, then <laughs> it'll, it'll be our butts on the line. So we have to be able to do everything and keep everybody happy. And you're never going to be able to keep everybody happy at the no. same time. You know, there's a difference, and we I understand that you cannot you cannot please everybody, nor nor you as a business. Some people some people are going to be against it for whatever reason, some, and um, that happens. And so you always have want to be as cordial as possible, right? But also you have to pick and choose sometimes, and mm -hmm. um, and people need to understand that <clears throat> that um, not sometimes the, all the, the time <laughs> the, 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 the city itself. It was then there wasn't no animosity beforehand. You know, after the pandemic, the animosity happened, the divisions happened. If you think it was divided before the pandemic, it's divided in splinter groups now bigger than ever. There's like at least nine different groups that you can think of of people saying, you know what? Better be careful. Yeah, before and, they and, used to and, complain about there being uh you know, the click of five and then the rest. And now there's the, <laughs> there's not even one click of five. Like there's there's three different groups pulling them three different ways and, and that, that causes so much problems. I mean, I, I, once you're up there and you're sitting, your brother and sister that are up there next to you, I mean, that's a family that you have to work with. It's like you go home and you, you get in a fight with your sister, or you get in a fight with your brother. The next day, we're back at it, but we're, we've got a common goal that we have to work towards. You know, and that's um, building and helping the family. And Laredo is the family. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, and daddy, dad's on the seat or, or mom's on the seat. And we got to, you know, that person has to help all of us, you know, steer in the right direction. You know, there's been, a, it's been, like, like you said, it's been very polarized. It's in the count in the council right now is very polarized, and I make this prediction back then that none of the ones, none of the incumbents will come back after COVID, and it it has it, and uh, you know so this didn't this election. You're talking about from the 2020 election? No, I'm talking from 2020 when they mm -hmm. come inside. I mm -hmm. said, I said this. You think they won't get elected? I go. No, nobody, nobody will come. Nobody will. Everybody is going to be. Voted out of office or not be here, a one, one term. Terms. Yeah, and that's interesting. And right now it's looking that way. You know the mayor's out, but uh, you know you you need somebody that can work with somebody. You can work with people. You can't have somebody that's going to say, you know what, I don't like the way he's talked, so let's remove the city manager. He's cost us more money than anything else. If you look down, you've cost us a lot of money. Oh no, I didn't it's because there's no. You you started out right away. You wanted to change the votes and make it a strong mayoral government. You removed Carlos Villarreal, which to me was the biggest mistake you ever did, even though people liked him or not. He kept everything in order. We should have replaced him with somebody that knew what was going on before going out in the different different directions. And people might not agree with me, but, but that's just the way it is. You know, and you have to be and, and then the next city council is gonna pick the new city manager. You know, and, and then the audacity of this council, which has gone through Four, five, six, seven, I don't know how many. I think it's city. five and seven years. Yeah, and uh, uh, this, uh, the audacity of them sending letters to the candidate saying, We're going to teach you all how to pick it. You guys couldn't pick the last six. And, and, city, and city attorneys, and who, got, who else you guys picked in the side. You know what I'm saying? You guys went out there because of personal issues against an assistant city, city manager because you guys had personal issues against this, this lady. And Jesus, you know. You know that we don't have uh, the financial finance director filled position. We haven't had it in years. Listen, the more <laughs> you look to it, the more they act like the mob, and the less. How can I say muscle they have? But the muscle that they have is the police and the uh, and the inspectors. Yeah, and, and, they'll, and, they'll right. and they'll use it in a heartbeat, and they've done it, and they use it in other people. And I, want, I, I went through it 
when we moved over here. I know what it is. So when people, and we'll talk about that in another day, but uh, when you hear people saying, oh, the inspectors came over here and they harassed me, why? Oh, because I had a, a sign outside, I believe it. Mm. I've seen it happen to restaurants. I've seen it happen, you know, in social media, and you see everybody voicing their opinions, and they're voicing them big time now. Oh, yeah. And they're out there, and yeah, people are be, be, uh, yeah. be, and and it's hey man, you know everybody. I respect everybody's opinion. I respect the first uh, first amendment. The and everybody has, you know what I'm saying. But uh, once respectful. you start going after family, yeah. like uh, el la esposa y el hijo, that's yeah. a different story. Thank God I haven't I haven't encountered any of that. I think I've I've, I've put out a message where people have, have been attracted to it. And people have been calling me up and saying, "Hey, we like what you're saying. We like what we believe in you, and we want to help you out. We want to, we want to go block walking with you. We want to meet with you. I want you to meet my abuelita. I want you to meet my tiros yeah. and stuff like that." And and we've gotten a really, really good embracement from from the district, and it's really great. And uh, obviously, uh, I know a lot of people outside the district, and what I tell them is, "Hey, you might not live in the district, but you know somebody that lives in the district, and we just need to spread the word. It's really that's what it is." Pro yep. Progress, progress, the future, families, our children. That's all. That's all. What this. That's all. That's why we're doing this. There's nothing else that we're doing this for. Uh, we need to. What you came up with that's pretty good is uh, we need to start looking for the for the small businesses and taking care of them, yeah. and making things faster. Making things faster. You got to make sure that they start their return of investment a lot faster. I wish you good luck. Thank and you. And all the rest of the guys out there, we'll keep going forward. Yeah. And. Um, it's, yeah, it's almost done. We've got one more week till early voting. And Is it? I thought it, was, I thought it was. I thought it was. right. It's one more week. This Monday is the seventeenth. Yeah, yeah. So, so one more week for early voting, vote and then that's then it's then it ends then. And then it's and two uh, weeks, and then the third week is uh, election day. So the last week of October, the first week of November, early voting, and then November eighth is election day. And folks. Um, if you guys are having problems with um, visitations and stuff like that, there's a couple of good videos here in the channel that you can see. It can give you ideas of what you should do. Talk to your attorneys, find out what it is. Talk to the district attorney here. He is very amicable about doing that. File those reports because it, it benefits you and your visitation of your kid in the future. Fight for your kids, man. Don't let them go just like that. Be involved in your kids' lives. So it's, it's hard sometimes to do that. But you have to do that. Understand what I'm saying? So yes, that's sir. the way it is. Thank you very much. Be I safe. appreciate it, Paul. Till next time. Much peace.